Okay, it looks like we are live. Yes, okay. Hi everybody, welcome to our Monday Night Slay Squad first call of August. I am crazy excited to intro our girl. So um, you guys know the host of Slay Squad, we kind of get together, we figure out who do we want to come share with our teams, who do we want to learn from ourselves. And it was a no-brainer for me to say, hey, let me reach out to Angie and she, see if she would be willing to swap calls or just to pour into this, this sort of team collaboration. And of course, because she's such a queen, she said, of course, of course. And so Angie tonight is going to talk all about how to market and brand yourself in such a way that leads to more enrollment. So it's, it's so awesome. This is such an amazing topic because it's one thing to become this like brand guru. It's a whole nother thing for that brand that you develop to actually lead to, to something that partners with our business model and helps people actually get started on your team or in your challenge groups, right? So Angie, I'm so thankful that you are spending a little bit of time with us tonight. I'm going to turn it over to you. I do have to say like, I, we're in for such a treat because Angie, I don't know if we've ever had this conversation, but you are somebody that has always been such the model of adding unique value in this business space. You know, it can be very difficult sometimes to set yourself apart um, because so much of our businesses overlap and are the same, but you've always been such an example to me personally on, you know, how to add value and step outside of that box and really become, you know, the person that, that people think of when they, when they think of X, Y, and Z. And I feel like you have completely mastered that. So I'm here with pen and paper, ready to go. I do want to turn it over to you though. And if you just take it away, I'm here to help. I'll make sure all the mute situations keep, you know, handled. And then if we have time at the end for Q and A, you just let me know. Amazing. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I can. Everybody okay. in the chat, can you hear her? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna can you hear me? <laughs> Yay. You never know technology. I know. Um, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. I'm definitely going to be sharing the goods and oh my gosh, you guys have so many people on your call. No pressure, right? So hopefully you guys are a fan of slides. I'm a very visual person. So to me, it helps. And before you freak out, I will get you the slides because that's always usually my first question. So I will share my screen with you guys and we will get into this. And it's going to be a lot of realness. I'm going to make it a full screen though, so that it's pretty. All righty. Cool. Everybody can see this. We're good. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. 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 All right. So basically what I'm going to take you guys through tonight is something that I did myself in my own business. And I do think that it's important that you continuously do this in your business. But I do want to say that whenever I saw a massive shift in exactly what Brittany said, which is why I take that so to heart, I really wanted to go outside of the realm of just talking beach body, beach body, beach body, and trying to provide value in a different way. And frankly, in a way that really just elevated my own vibration and just made me happier. And therefore I was converting more in my business because I was just doing what made me happiest. And all of that had to do with branding, which is something that I love. So I've got you, if you feel like you suck at it, I did once too. Do not worry. We've got this. So I kind of laid out what I want to talk to you guys about, and I will totally take questions at the end of this. No worries. And if I talk fast, my coaches joke that I speak at like audible 2x speed. I have a lot to say, so buckle up. And like I said, I'll get you guys the slides, but number one, I want to go over branding basics and just what branding is and how you can kind of just jump right into it right away. Um, how to create great content, because it's one thing to have a really good Lightroom preset. It's a whole other thing to take a really good picture and actually create great content where to post, which is super important for us, how to build your funnel. So the first half, like the first three are really just like the content but the second, the last three are really, okay, cool. Like we've got the content, but how are we going to grow our business from it? So building your funnel, how to create features and how to share the benefits. And I'm going to jump into all this. And my goal is that you slay success club this month. So a little bit of words of wisdom that I needed to learn myself. If you want, you know, not just your business, obviously we hear this all the time, you know, treat your business like a business, but if you, if you can fully understand that social media is your job, treat it as such. It's not just that Beachbody is your business because most of us treat our business like a business in the sense that 
I love you, but you're doing as much as your challengers are doing. You're doing your workout, you're drinking your shake, and you might post it on social media, but you're stopping there. And those last three points that I was sharing with you of creating that funnel and sharing the features and the benefits, that's really what's going to differentiate you from your challengers and how much does your challengers make? Zero. So I want you guys to be able to crush it this month and actually have your biggest month ever front and, and also in the happiest way. Can I just add that? Because this is something that brought me so much joy and just this little, you know, shift that I made, made such a difference in my own happiness, which led to crazy amounts of success in the business. And I think that the two are definitely related. So find your own equation. What works for one coach might not work for another coach. And that is so dang true. What you hear from, you know, I have two top 10 coaches in my own team and they are so different from me and they are so different from each other, but what they do works for them. So the other thing is that success won't come overnight. Be in this for the long game. I always say that longevity is like the key to this business. Someone's drawing on my slides. <laughs> it's not me, I promise. It's okay, it's okay. As soon as I switch, it'll probably go away. That used to happen to me all the time on Zoom and it hasn't happened in forever. It's hilarious. It's all good. Someone's like trying to take notes. It's all good. Just don't, thank you. <laughs> so success won't come overnight. Um, just like, you know, staying in your own lane and figuring out your own equation, comparison will always be the thief of your joy. And I think that one of the big themes of this call is how to find your joy on a different level in the business through branding. But when you compare yourself to someone else, that's either a coach or not a coach or whatever, you don't know their story. You don't know where they started. You don't know their background, what they've studied. You know, maybe they studied photography in school. Maybe that's what it was. And maybe that's why they're so dang good at taking pictures. We have no idea. So don't compare yourself. There is no traffic when you stay in your own lane. You will be the happiest when you stay in your own dang lane. Um, ignore the haters. I had, you know, from afar, I thought that I had haters when I first started, or at least let's call them judgers. And in the end, I feel like thanking them would be the better thing because that was what motivated me to almost stick it to the haters or stick it to the doubters that, you know what, I can do this and I will crush this. Good lighting is your best friend. We're going to talk about lighting and how to take good pictures. Learn to say no. And what I mean by this is if your friends want to go out to drinks every Thursday night, maybe shift that towards your business because your business will thank you in a year from now. That was something that I had to start saying no to. So anything that didn't serve my own growth and my own business goals, I slowly started to take out of my life. And does that mean I said no to everything? No, but I did understand that certain things need to take priority and it was the things that would transform my life in the long run and never stop evolving. So I'm going to show you guys pictures of like whenever I first started to now, I've evolved many, many times and there has been many branding revamps, but those are some of the basics. And I didn't skip a slide, did I? No. Okay. So this is like the fun stuff that I nerd out over. So I don't know if you guys know this, but color is a huge part of your brand. Color evokes a certain emotion, no matter what, there's no wrong color to choose. But when you think of your brand and you could have multiple colors in your brand, but when I think of you know, just a random example, but Holly Hillier's page is very, very blue. Like she has blue as one of her, that's like her main color when you go to her page. Mine would definitely be like pink and like oranges and yellow, like very bright colors. Um, one of my PS coaches is Mandy Kai, black and white. We always joke about that with her page. Like homegirl does not like color, black and white. So I just, no matter what it is, you need to understand that whichever color that you associate with will evoke a certain emotion in someone. So with pink, obviously it's very feminine and very soft with yellow. It's, you know, you think of like the smiley face with purple. I always give this example. And I think thinking of the emotion that you want to evoke is so smart, not just thinking of who you want to be like, but what do you want your future coach or future customer to feel? So purple, I always think of crown Royal. It's very regal. There's a lot of royalty. It's very classy. So think of other brands that use it and what that emotion evokes in you. You know, black is very elegant, very simple, very clean, very minimalist. The other thing that you think of once you've got your color under control, and I know that Brittany is like the queen of this, but font combos. I use the same font in everything that I do from team calls to team announcements to IGTV headlines to the thumbnails for my YouTube videos there is the same font for everything. And even if for one month, I'm like, you know what? I should switch it up. I don't because when someone sees that font and you don't have to overthink it, it can just, you know, you need one simple font. And that's how, what I did. I did one simple font and one cursive font. It can be two cursive fonts. It can be, it doesn't matter, but I just stick to those two. And the point in this is that once you've made a decision, there's going to be a certain amount of consistency throughout your posts. And the goal here is that when someone sees something of a certain color, 
specific shade, a certain font combo, they know, hey, that's you, that's Julie. You know, like they know that it's you. And that's really, that's when you know you've nailed branding. Um, I wanted to share this with you guys because this has very much has to do with our business. When you're thinking of your challenge group or even your team name, I get this question a lot, you know, make it fun, make it something exciting. I title my challenge groups every single, I would say month or second month. And the way that I do this is I go find a brand name generator on Google, wherever you can find them on Pinterest. You can find them on Google. This was just off of Pinterest. So you can find a blog name generator too. That's what I did. And basically what you'll do is you'll find a combination of words and title your challenge group. The point in this, you guys, is that then you're jazzed about it. You've titled it. It's yours. You have the, the cover photo for it. You've got the colors and there's a name and a tagline for it. And that gives you ownership. And we're going to talk about ownership a lot tonight, but to me, branding is ownership. That's where you know what you're talking about. You know what you're offering people and you can get so much more excited about it than dare I say, this is my prenatal bar blend challenge group. Like you have no ownership on that. Elise does cool, but it's not, you know, you don't feel that sense of like the mama bear, like this is mine and I created this and I'm so dang proud of it. So figure out your own name brand generator, name taglines and all of that. Again, Pinterest, Google, there's a ton of them out there, but I truly do. do I do this every single, you know, second month. Then in terms of photos, this is really just up to you and preference. I know Brittany is like the queen of Canva. I love PicMonkey. I've always used PicMonkey. Invato is a spot where I literally use this service. So let's say you're creating a video and you need a shot of a bunch of people like having drinks. That's what Invato is. If you need fonts, Invato has that. If you need a stock footage of a donut, like whatever, they, they have that. So it's basically just stock video, fonts, um, presets, everything. So there is a membership, but I use it all the time. Oat stock, I've used it forever. I'm slowly starting to not just because there's so many other platforms like PicMonkey and Canva that offer it, but it's just blank pretty pictures. So like this little coffee cup here at the bottom of that, that stuff like oat stock and then Pinterest and Google. I'm going to talk to you guys about other apps that I love and other websites, but those are really like the foundation of what I use for branding. All right. So I think this is the last of branding basics. And this is probably my most exciting one branding worksheets. So like I said, there are, you know, such a diverse amount of ways that you can represent yourself and in the weight, like you could literally think of different top coaches that would represent each one of these photos, right? Like it doesn't matter which one you are. And you might not even be in one of these pictures. I'm just trying to get you to start thinking of who you are and what you represent. So your visual aesthetic. And the point in all of this is like I said, consistency, consistency, and not only showing up, you've got to show up for your brand to even be present, but consistency and showing up consistency in your heart and your efforts and consistency in the way that you present yourself and in your vibes. So Personally, my brand is hands down the ones with color. But like I said, Miss Mandy Kai would definitely be this Adidas girl here with the perfect silver hair. Like that is so Mandy, it hurts my soul. Um, but someone like Kelsey Hill, like she would not even be on this list, I don't think. Like she'd probably be something with like a little teal blue with a little, a little baby in hand. Like, so you've got to figure out what in a visual way what image would represent your brand. The best way to do this is Pinterest and just having a visual aesthetic idea of what your brand is. And again, this can evolve, but I think it's important to note that don't try and be a watered down version of someone else. Just take some time to think about what jazzes you. And the way that I do this is I think of words that not only represent what I want people to see when they come to my page, but what I want them to feel. And that was something that took me a long time to discover, but that emotion is such a huge part of branding. And one thing that someone told me, and it's, it's really interesting how you, as your followers grow and as your challenge groups grow, they will tell you what your brand is. So one thing that's kind of come to the surface over the past year is a lot of people have told me that my brand is ultimately something that can make them feel like a little kid, even though they're a full grown adult. That's my brand. Like there isn't really much else to it. So dreaming big. And you know, the fact that you can eat donuts and be fit, like those are all emotions that people feel when they come to my page, but that's super ridiculously specific. So thinking of that, but it can be something as simple as I want it to be minimal and clean, or I want it to be super colorful. I want it to be really girly. And I will tell you one thing I struggled with that in the beginning of my business. I didn't know 
if I should do the girly thing because it's who I am, obviously, if you've seen any of my office, like I have an office downstairs, it's like all like fuzzy pink. I'm very girly, but I hid that for a long time. I hid the Disney thing for a really long time. And what I did is I was trying to appeal to everyone and therefore I appealed to no one because I didn't even know who I was myself. And I ultimately was just trying to hide it. So things like the fact that I had gained weight with Beachbody, I went from, I think it was like 115, 120 to 135, 140. And I hid that for the longest time. And one day I said, well, there's got to be a girl out there like me that feels and looks better, but that added weight to the scale. So I started branding myself as that. The other thing that I started, and once that kind of worked and I thought, oh, okay, so when I'm real, it works. So then I thought, well, why don't I just share the love for Disney? And I did, and that worked. And then I said, well, to hell with it, everything pink and we're going to go with it. And that worked. So even these slides that you're looking at right now, like that's branded. There's the same font on everything. There's the same color on everything like that's branding. So thinking about it from that standpoint, um, which colors and patterns fit better with your aesthetic. So maybe it's just like a simple cloudy pink, maybe it's gold, maybe it's black, maybe it's pink, whatever. But I do think the key in this is staying consistent and true to what you originally stand for. And yes, you can shift it a little bit, but testing it for long enough that you can truly feel that branding kind of coming to life. And again, which fonts kind of speak to you the most. And the whole point in this is that you just start to think about what's speaking to you the most. All right. So next, once we've kind of gone over like the branding and the basics of, hopefully that helped, um, but the basics of branding, really the needle mover is going to be creating content. So this is literally a screenshot from my phone. This is what I have on the main page of my phone. I have like a little folder that says photo and video. These are the apps that I use for the most part. Um, one thing I will tell you guys, and because I love you, I will give you the best tip ever. One question that I get a lot is, how do you take such pretty pictures at sunset? I don't, it's not real. <laughs> so it's an app called QuickShot and it basically creates like a pretty cotton candy sky. Even if there are no clouds in the sky, just to add a little bit of something, something to the picture, I will add that in QuickShot. Now, you know, my big secret. Um, if there are people in the photo or even like wires, like um, electrical wires, or I don't know, birds or something that you don't want in the picture, you can use that retouch app and just like kind of toggle over it and it'll erase it. Preview is what I use to set the tone for the grid of what my page will actually look like. And yeah, Lightroom, obviously. Um, Facetune I use for whitening, not my teeth. I use it for whitening, anything that looks yellow. So sometimes when I take a picture in not good lighting, it will have like a little touch of yellow in it. Whenever I'm doing stories, I use that Kira Kira. It's basically like the sparkly effect, which now that exists in stories, so you don't really need it. And the other ones I don't really use as much. My DJI was my drone. And I don't know if my husband can hear me. It's at the bottom of the ocean right now. So we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. It's always a fun story. Um, he doesn't like it though. All good. So natural light will be your best friend. Like I said, um, always take a photo with the light coming towards you, not lit from behind you. The other thing, as this is so true to coaches too. We are trying to share our lifestyle that we somewhat have our life together. Now I'm not saying to not share your real life because listen, if you've got heaps of messy laundry, maybe that's part of your brand and that you're balancing it all. I don't want to say that, but there is something to be said for having a certain aesthetic of your background and just being mindful of it is more so what I'm saying. So trying to think about that angles, experiment with different angles. Whenever I see my coaches in person, which hopefully that will be soon, um, we always do this thing. I always tell them to go in front of the mirror and I teach them how to take nice pictures and just figure out their angles. So those of you guys, if has it ever happened that you ask like your husband slash spouse to take a picture of you and it almost ends in a divorce, we've all been there. One thing that I do is I practice my own angles before and I will frame the frame with the phone before he takes the phone from me. So I will literally say, okay, stand here. I'm going to stand here. The other thing you guys is it's, it's patience. So he's gotten really, really good at it over the years and communication and just patience. And I think the best way to explain it to your husband would be, honey, I need five minutes, five minutes of your undivided focus. Cause it really, it's a focus thing. Like they need to just focus for five minutes and then they can be let go. So I just think that, you know, you figuring out your own angles and you framing it for them and communicating what you're looking for will help so much. But I know a lot of you guys probably feel my pain on that. You're, you're normal if that's happened to you. So know your angles, um, stay crisp. So many people don't realize this. I clean my lens like three times a day. If your pictures are ever even a little bit blurry, I do it on my computer too. 
if you can see like a light flare from behind anywhere, that's because your lens is dirty. So clean your lens, especially now that there's like three freaking lenses on this thing. Like that makes the biggest difference. But I want you guys to know, I don't really use a fancy camera to take my pictures. Your phone is the best. I will film certain entire videos on my phone. So the other thing you can do is obviously get yourself some apps. There is the Photoshop app on your phone. I don't really use that that much, but Photoshop, I mean, like get an editing app, get something to help yourself out. There's a ton of different ones that are great. I just, I really like Lightroom. Um, and then yeah, use your phone. Snapseed is another one that's really great, especially if your lighting sucks, you can lighten it in either Lightroom or in Snapseed. And I don't think, I don't think anybody uses Visco Cam anymore, but just in case that's good too. Okay. So this is what I want to share with you guys. So my point in sharing this isn't that I necessarily sucked back then because I hate, I hate when coaches say that, like, I am where I am because I started at this point, right? And it, there's by no means anything wrong with what I was sharing, but you can see the difference. And the difference is, is that one is over filtered, one has a ton of writing on it, and also one was in 2013. So that's, that's the big difference. But can I tell you guys what's good about this? I showed up. I showed up every single day, sometimes three times a day, because back then it was the thing to post three times a day. And by default, I was winning in my business. Was I the best coach ever? No, but I was growing a business because I, I showed up with passion, with excitement. But what I shifted was more stuff about me, less curated content, meaning I didn't just grab stuff off of Pinterest, like just on here, like this love pic, oh, that love picture was not mine. The rest are mine. Oh no, the be present was not mine, but I put the font on it. Like, so it was still good but nothing, it was just very much all over the place. And you can definitely see the contrast, right? So I'll tell you guys what is different about now. So now what I do is every so often, pretty much every season, I choose one main color. That's how it looks that way. It's not some fancy editing thing. I just make sure that that picture has one pop of that main color. So these pictures, I love this grid because it was taken around Valentine's day before the world just went to crap. And, <laughs> and it was all like, everything was pink. There was a little bit of red because of Valentine's day, but everything had a little touch of pink. So I just, just make sure that whatever your brand color is, that there's at least one touch of it. And if the picture doesn't have that color, so this picture of me next to my bar cart, there was no pink in that. That champagne bottle was not pink. You can use PicMonkey to change the color. You just do the eye change color tool. Like you can change people's eye color, yes. I don't use to change my eye color. I use to change items in my picture. So a little bit of trickery. Same with this. This love thing was not pink. So I completely changed that. And then it just fit with the grid. So that's what makes it visually appealing when you land on someone's page. They're not, you know, an amazing human. It's just a little bit of editing sorcery. That's really all. It is. <laughs> so don't ever think to yourself that you suck. Like they're just, they've got a couple tricks up their sleeve. So hopefully that helps your confidence a little bit. All right. Social media platforms. So there is no wrong platform to show up on. I just really believe in video right now because I feel like people can get to know me and I feel like I express myself better on there. I was getting really frustrated with Instagram with just trying to find a way to express myself. So the way that I've kind of bundled my business is I created this idea of a content machine where I post on one platform and for me that's YouTube and it feeds all my other platforms. So what I'll do is once a video is up, I will then notify or post something that complements it on Instagram. I will also share that on Facebook. I will also share, you know, eventually when I get my life together, I will eventually post that on a blog. I've been saying that for the past seven years. So maybe one day I actually will. I just, I think that, you know, you have to figure out which platforms speak to you based off of where you think that you can hang out the most consistently. Again, the theme is consistency. And for a lot of us, that's Instagram, but maybe what if it's IGTV? So the way that you can show up on multiple platforms is not only having that content machine, but also scheduling. So I use a specific scheduling app. I always link it. It's on my videos. There's a video that I have. It's, I think it's called app fee, but I know that I have a discount for it. It's the best. So you, it'll literally tell you when you should be scheduling your post based off of your audience. And then you can also create a grid from it. So that's what I use. I love it. Now you don't have to do that. You can post every single day. I did forever. Just, it helps me for the days that I'm like, Oh, I don't have anything today. Or I haven't shown up in two days and I really need to post something today, but I really don't feel like it normal. So I usually schedule. The other thing that I've done is I, a couple of these will 
kind of help you with, you know, getting a little group together. Maybe you have success partners. So either creating like a group community board on Pinterest or having, doing a giveaway together with a couple other coaches or doing a comment pod. I know a lot of my coaches do comment pods where they'll get into a little chat thread on Facebook and be like, okay, I posted. And they all go love on each other's stuff. The other thing though, that I want to add to this is they don't just blindly love on each other's stuff. They'll also offer feedback. So if the coach isn't posting like the best stuff or it's just not, they'll let them know. And they'll also say, Hey, by the way, this one was really good the other day. So that it's also guidance. It's not just blindly spamming. Like any time on social media that seems too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So there, I think there's a big difference between encouraging and finding resources and, you know, kind of pumping each other up that way, but trying to find a backwards way about it won't work. Um, stories and Snapchat, I love video. I love IGTV. I don't know if, I think only like huge YouTube influencers have remained on Snapchat. I don't think anybody else is left on Snapchat. But one thing that I do is I'll go on there, download the video off of Snapchat and share it on my stories just to spice it up and make it different. I will do that sometimes. Um, stories, obviously, no matter what, that's my biggest converter is stories because it's video and IGTV and IG live are huge. I try to go live at least once a week. And I try to do an IGTV at least once a week. So I have an IGTV Instagram page. It's dedicated to only video now. And I just, I love video. I love communicating via video. I feel like people get to see my weird quirks. They understand who I truly am. And I just think it makes the biggest difference. So I think we went over everything. Yeah. Plan your grid, all of that. Okay. So now into like the business part of it. So now that we've gone through the branding and the colors and all the, like how to take pictures, this is how it will pertain to your business. So your funnel, and I hate calling it a funnel, but it's what it is. It's basically all roads lead to this. So I don't send people anywhere. I don't send them to my inbox. I don't send them to my DMS. I don't send them to a YouTube video. I send them here. So this is just a form. You can do this on Google form. You can do this on jot form. You can do this on type form is my favorite. Cause it just looks really pretty. Um, you can do this on Wix. You can do this on there's one more Squarespace. So I have a Squarespace website. You can do it totally for free. And I want to say that the key to this is that I have a video at the top of it. It doesn't have to be the most fancy video and I'll give you guys a tip. I don't know if it's even allowed, but I'll just tell you it's what I do. Um, you can pull the video from Beachbody. So let's say the prenatal program that just launched. So for those of you guys that are moms or the running program that's coming out or nine week control freak that's coming out or whatever. So you take that program or MBF, you take that program video and you know, when they cut to the scene of people working out at home, superimpose yourself. Cool. You're in the commercial and then you can add it. And it just adds like a little, or you can even import in, import yourself just being like, I love this program because X, Y, Z, and then let the video keep going. Right? Like, then you're a part of the promo for it. That, and that's for the people that are like really, really shy and really don't know what to do. But what I would suggest, speak from the heart, set up your phone, talk for less than five minutes about how this challenge group, this program specifically has changed your life and use the title that you came up with for your challenge group, not the program name, not that super trainer, you, you're the secret sauce. So on mine, I literally will always have whatever I'm talking about in my stories, I always have them follow the bouncing ball. You know, like the, the Disney sing-alongs where the Mickey's like, doo, doo, doo. it's kind of like that. You've got to stay consistent with your marketing and your branding so that when they get to this form, they know, oh, that's that thing that she was talking about. The, the boxing program. I see it. And that's the picture I saw on her stories. I got it. I got it. So my challenge group at the beginning, beginning of summer was called the four week shred. And then I had one called the six week summer sculpt. You guys, it's really not like, listen, I'm not the best at the brand names, but I was doing a four week program one week and then a six week program the next week. Like that's all it was. Okay. Um, so I kept the same pictures and those pictures are just found off of PicMonkey. And then I have the form below super simple questions. Like what's your primary goal? Um, what's your biggest hurdle? Where do you live? And are you already a coach or currently working with one? Cause I don't want to ever step on people's toes. So that's all, and this just keeps your business simple that when you're talking about anything, all roads lead to this so that then you can wake up hopefully with emails in your inbox. So the way that I do this and the way that I actually get people filling out the forms is I share the features. So this is all part of my challenge group. You guys, I haven't even yet spoken to them about, oh, this is usually the line that I have. Oh yeah. And you get the workouts too. Like this is the value. So 
I do a custom meal plan, which is fixate, just so you guys know, um, ultimate portion fix. And then see, I have all the calendars and everything in there. But see how I made it really, really small. And then I just added a pretty picture with the branding of the challenge group and then the grocery list. And then I share a little sample meal plan, literally of what I eat for five days. So I share all of this publicly as like a zoomed out version so they can see what's in my challenge group and I'm sharing the features, but I'm never giving it all away for free. Again, consistent branding, font colors and everything so that they're following that bouncing ball so that it all does look consistent. And then the benefits. So I think that we're often really quick to be like, oh, I don't have a crazy transformation, dude. I by no means had a crazy transformation. Um, but one thing that really, really was nuts for me with the launch of 10 rounds was sharing the confidence. So this story, I went back and I was super emotional. I don't know if you guys were super emotional finishing 10 rounds. I've never cried at the end of a program and it didn't help that he was crying, but thinking of how far we had come over those, what was it? Six weeks. It was nuts. Just like what we had experienced, but I grabbed a picture of when we were in Florida and I was trying to do it. And literally the death stares that I was giving the television of how much, not only did I suck, but I was just really mad at Joel. Cause I was like, this is hard, bro. And like, I know I can't do this. And I just looked like a baby giraffe, like a broken baby giraffe trying to do this workout. And the transformation of me doing the program on the last week. And all I did is I went into the archive of my stories, but I remember thinking it'd be interesting to see how crappy I was on day one versus now. And so this, this is in my highlights, but when people see that, yes, they can see the physical transformation, but they see the confidence. So I share that it's more than just the physical, but then of course, like sharing your, your current customers transformations and just something as simple, scroll through your challenge group really quick and share that. Um, and then I always grab like the mamas on the team. Like they just, they kill it. And I always share their stuff and just, I try to make my journey shareable and I try and share their journey for them and just highlight them as well. Um, and the last thing I wanted to share just, you know, going back to like that first picture that I, that screenshot of my first page, I sucked back then. Okay. Like, and I think we all suck and just be okay with that. Be brave enough to be bad at something new. And once you can create that level of momentum where you can feel yourself getting better and better and better, even if it's just a little touch better, you will, you know, be tenfold um, further in your business. And I just think it will so translate in what you're converting and what you're seeing in terms of growth in your business. And you'll be so much happier for it because it'll be you and you'll be authentically able to speak on it. So that's all I've got, but I can answer all of the questions. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Angie. Okay. <laughs> you guys flood the chat now with your questions because now's your chance. I just, I think it's such, I mean, I have a few things to say, but I'll be quick, but I just love that you share this Angie, because I think, in a lot of ways, we simplify this business so much, which is a beautiful thing, meaning anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. Anybody can build a successful business. But I think that sometimes that like suppresses the potential a little bit and people don't like break out of this mold to really kind of say like, wait, like I can clean this up, make this really professional and make this like, you know, really make sense for my life. And I just love, because I feel like you've raised the bar in that way. Like you're like you said, like you've created this beautiful funnel. You're, you're obviously great at graphics and visuals, but you weren't always at the level that you're at now, you know? So that shows all of us that we can all learn. It's a teachable skill, you know, but I just love it because you kind of elevate the game a little bit, which I think is a wonderful thing to give everybody else permission to elevate in their own way too. So I wanted to ask you as the questions are kind of coming through, um, that beautiful graphic that you shared with, um, sort of the meal plans and the grocery list and all that. So is that kind of your flow for every challenge group? Do you, do you have like this either mental or physical checklist of like, okay, the next six week program or the fall, you know, challenge group or the winter challenge group is coming up. So I've got to redo a quick graphic for this, 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 and this is, is it that systematic? And so you've practiced it so much. All you're doing is picking your visuals and your name and basically yeah. repackaging it. I try and think of what I need. So for, I was in the original test group for nine week control freaks. So I had to figure out a way that I could get my nutrition under control, distract my following enough that I could talk yeah. about that. So I made it eight weeks so that I wouldn't get into any trouble by saying anything about nine weeks. So I did an eight week. I knew I needed to do. So I figure out the length. I get a really t like exciting title that I get jazzed about. 
and I figure out the focus. And for that, it was ultimate portion fix. So yeah. then it really, like the visuals really became about nutrition. Um, the one that I'm doing right now that I literally just launched, I, I called it a choose your own adventure because that is the year that we're living in of this jumanji <laughs> right. And the point of that is that they're taken right until the end of the year. So there's always a theme in mind, a length, and yeah. a game plan for them. So yeah, it is kind of that systematic. Yeah. And then lastly for me, and then I'm going to move on to the chat because they're blowing it up. Um, how far in advance are you planning like the next group? Um, two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. Okay. Let me, let me like rapid fire these at you if that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What was the way she superimposes self into video? Oh, you can just do like the iMovie app. You yeah. would splice the video, cut it. I'm going to get in so much trouble, but it's okay. <laughs> cut the video and then you can just film yourself and superimpose it into the video. Beautiful. And Julie Forrest, I would say Snapseed over Visco. Yeah, Visco is kind of getting dated. Okay, let's try, Catherine, I see your question, but let's keep it topic specific really quickly. Are you um, still coming out with the preset? Somebody asked. Um, yeah, but I have a full video. I have a video. If you search like Angie Belmar photo editing or something on my, it's on my channel. Like I literally take Lightroom and I'm like, this is how I edited this photo. So you don't need a preset is more the point of that video. Yeah. So I'll save you some money. <laughs> how do you get people to the funnel? Do you send a link, make your own website? Or are you like inviting, pushing it through YouTube and then stories, right? Is kind of your flow basically anytime that I talk about my challenge group. So if it's a swipe up or if it's a DM and you know, if you don't have a swipe up, it'll just send it to your DMS and then I send them the link. Yeah. And my point is more, I don't send them to all these different places. It's a way for me to organize it and a way that people can get a simple amount of information Yeah. and kind of commit that way. Um, do you ever do free groups? Not anymore. You guys, I had done a free group whenever I was a new coach and I had 800 people and I worked so hard for it and I signed up zero people from it. Like it was just more of a distraction than anything else. And again, like stay in your lane, right? Like it worked yeah. for another coach and I tried to do it. And it didn't work for me. I was like, okay, we're going to chalk it up to that. We're not going to do that anymore. Never mind. And then it goes failure moments, but no, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm trying to sift through these a little bit. What is the scheduling app that you use? It's called post app fee. It's in the link in my bio on Instagram and that it's literally the greatest thing. Like that's honestly what I use. And I just like that it gives you the statistics of what, when you should be posting. Yeah. And it has that grid view too. That's awesome. Um, okay. I think somebody's asking about onboarding coaches, but does anybody else have any branding questions you guys or enrollments attached to Angie's flow? Oh yeah. Splice is a really good app too that you can use. What are you using preview for Pre preview app for preview is a different way of just seeing, I think it's owned by Instagram. It's a different way of seeing your grid. Julie is wondering if you could talk a little bit about hashtags. Yes. Um, so I believe in not only the visual of like the visual of using hashtags is not the best because it looks, dare I say, thirsty. And I, I believe that there's got to be a way that Instagram would kind of mess with your stuff if you're overusing it, right? Like taking advantage of it. So I would say use between like three and seven to 10 max, like not overusing it and trying to be cognizant of the ones that have, like if, if you're hashtagging something that has 5 million hits, pick something with like about a hundred thousand instead. Yeah. So I was trying to get really specific. Okay. Um, when you invite via DMs, are you sending them? Yeah. So I guess we can reiterate. Are you sending them to um, your landing page or link to your form? Always. So yeah. I don't, I don't go on and on with the conversation in my DMs. I send them there that way. And this will also eliminate the weirdness in conversations. That's what I, that just on the conversation of onboarding, the biggest thing that my new coaches will tell me is, well, I feel weird whenever I'm messaging people. I'm like, but you shouldn't feel weird because if you're sharing your journey and they're coming to you and they've filled out that form, then after they've filled out that form, the conversation is to get them the results and get them the answers that they've asked in that form. So it's not like you feel super icky yeah. and super weird because they want the answers. 
And it's like Angie, what Angie already said, I think that's kind of like the payoff of consistency. It's like you no longer have to feel so awkward in the invitation because your consistency is like laying that foundation for people to say, I am interested. And then the invite is like doing them a favor. You're like, oh, let me help you and give you the info that you want, right? Um, okay, um, how often are you taking pictures and planning it all out? Mm, I like doing, I used to love doing that on the weekend, but now that I do this full time, it's just on a day that I feel good about myself <laughs> that there's good lighting too. And I'll just mash out a ton, like on Friday, just mash out a ton of pictures yeah. and that'll probably last me for the week. Awesome. Okay. Um, do you like Linktree? Um, yeah, I like Linktree. I had Linktree for a long time. I just recently got a new one called Beacons, but I'm pretty sure you have to be approved to be on air. I just, I like that you could have a video. Mm. Um, Michaela's asking how to determine your color scheme. Do you just review your old content or get in Pinterest to make a mood board? Do you suggest incorporating quotes in your content? I, the quote thing is really a preference. I just, when I look at my old grid versus now, the biggest difference maker was the fact that I had so much wording on everything. So I just cleaned it up. Um, the way that I pick the color is either seasonal, what I'm juiced about, or that like emotion that I want to evoke. Yeah. That's awesome. And then as far as like, uh, like story content, do you, um, do you do more just like behind the scenes or do you plan out story content similar to I your never, feed? Yeah. I never I love how that, but that's why I love video. Like I, even my IGTVs are always off the cuff. I am usually in a sports bra and sweaty and disgusting, but <laughs> it's the behind the scenes and it's real. Yeah. Like my dog loses his mind and starts, starts barking. That's why people love it. It's just very off the cuff and very real. That's, that's why I truly love video. And then, um, I think a lot of these are, are beautiful questions, but a lot of them, you guys are repeat. So I want to just kind of encourage you to um, maybe we can do a quick recap because there's a lot of repeat, but I think it might be valuable to hear just Angie, like how, and it might be so simple, but how do you go about creating the content or brainstorming the content specifically is mainly like your main piece and then you break off from YouTube or is that what you would say? Maybe YouTube is like your main focus and then you, you feed the rest from the YouTube content. So how are you, like, what's your process for brainstorming the content? Uh, that you're creating on onto YouTube? Well, one thing that I can tell you guys is definitely looking at the questions that you're being asked the most. So one thing that I started to get asked a lot, especially whenever I first started creating videos was questions about Disney and people, and also thinking about it from a sense of what's something that you could yammer about if you were locked in a room and you just needed to talk forever and you just need right. to. So thinking about it from that standpoint. So usually what I'll do is I will film a video on something that's on my heart or that I'm getting asked about. Mm -hmm. And then all of the complimentary type of topics that kind of go with it or any of the photos. And usually the photos on my Instagram are actually the thumbnail for the YouTube. So I'm not doing double the work for everything mm -hmm. or it's just a still from yeah. my YouTube. Yeah. And then as far as like growing the audience, obviously there's a lot of work and connection, mm -hmm. but would you say like a big part of that sort of wheel is just the valuable content that you consistently show up with like are you googling like youtube see like how to grow my youtube or is it just like the audience is learning that the content is valuable and authentic to you and that's what's driving more views and more audience growth is that what you say i think so i asked kelsey hill is a coach in my downline and i asked her i had her at a dinner table once and i was like you're gonna tell me what you do <laughs> <laughs> so she said and she said it so beautifully she was like I want to make it good enough that, you know, that little icon that you can like share. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever done that. You have a best friend on Instagram. You're like, Oh my God, girl, you need to see this. She's like, that's what I want to happen. Yeah. They're sending it to their best friend who would also be my target clientele. So that's what I often try to do on videos or any posts that it's so good that that girl will tag her best friend in it, or at least send it to her DMS. And I, I love that concept of that's make awesome. it good enough that they're coming back, but also sharing it. Yeah. And then like for you and your brand, have you always had this like awareness of what you wanted to share or is that something that's developed over the years? I mean, I know you showed us oh your God. visual content, but. I went through such a weird phase in my business where I would look at other coaches and I would look at other Instagrammers and I would almost dilute myself to try and 
fit into the mold that they were. So at one point in my business, I think I was like a mesh of trying to be Amy Silverman. That's what I'm talking about, by the way. She studied photography in school. I studied architecture in school, so I'm good at it. But I used to compare myself so bad. And I'm like, she's a photographer. Like that's literally what she does. So stop trying to think that you're, so I was trying to be like a mix of Amy Silverman and this girl called Lynn Lowe's, who was like this Swedish adorable. I love her. And I just completely diluted who I was as a person instead of just being my own authentic me. Yeah. That's awesome. Angie, thank you so much for your time. You guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. I, I, I see your questions, but I just want to respect Angie's time and um, it's all in there. I promise it's all in her slides. It's all, it's all in there. So maybe you hopped on late, but Angie girl, thank you so much. We appreciate you. I think so that um, you, you just, you, you, again, like you, you elevate the space in a beautiful, refreshing way. So I have to say thank you so much for being you and letting your light shine because it's beautiful. So Andy, you're thank awesome. You. If you guys have questions, you can totally DM me on like Instagram or something. I'm normal. I'll answer. Um, and I'll get you guys the slides also. Okay. Thanks girl. All right. Awesome. All right. Bye everybody. Bye, Bye. Have the best night. See ya. Thanks for being on with us. Bye.